Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to optimize uh, an X670E platform featuring a Ryzen 7000 series processor. Um, sort of the the ins and outs of the BIOS, what sort of settings you want to enable. Uh, if you're someone who is, this video is not for overclocking or undervolting. That's not what we're going to cover here. Essentially, what we're going to show is how to enable uh, eco mode. Uh, through based off of changing the power limits allocated to the CPU from the motherboard so the numbers that I'm going to feature when we go into the the actual uh, tweaking the the PPT limit and those sort of things for example these are taken directly from the the actual vendor so these numbers were given to them by AMD so that's what we're going to cover today so next we're going to want to go to advanced mode uh, so you want to go to advanced mode or F2 and then in here, this is where you're going to set the XMP profile uh, or the Expo profile, if you depending on the memory kit that you have. So in my case, I've already set XMP1. Uh, that's already, you can see the memory is running at the 5600 megahertz, which is the speed. This is a 64 gigabyte memory kit, so it's two DIMMs. Uh, so what we want to do now is we want to go to advanced CPU settings. So in here, this is where you'd want to enable SVM if you're going to be doing any sort of virtual machine hosting or any sort of anything with VM or you're going to run software, uh, for example, like uh, BlueStacks, for instance. If you wanted to run Android mobile games on Windows, you would want to enable SVM mode so that your BlueStacks uh, emulation tool can run in the virtualized environment and, and, act, and have access to the resources that way. So that's that's going to be a good one because I think the default is disabled, um, but you'd want to set this one to enabled. That is if you plan to do anything with virtualization. Um, the other settings here, we're just going to kind of leave them on the default. This defaults to P0. We're not really going to change the PPC adjustment. Global C-State control, some people like to disable that because they, they don't want the parts of the Uncore or actual devices uh, sending interrupts to park cores and that sort of thing. So we're just going to kind of leave that one on auto as well. So SMT mode, this is going to be simultaneous multi-threading. So each core on an AMD processor can handle two threads of work at a time. So what that means is the operating system will typically see a single core for an AMD processor as two logical cores. That is if you have SMT enabled. So the auto, I think, is basically enabled. So, for example, we're using a uh, Ryzen 9 7950X. That's a 16-core processor physically. Uh, but because of this SMT mode, it allows two threads per processor. So that means in Windows, Windows will actually see this as a 32-core or 32-thread processor. So 16-core, 32-thread. But if we disable this, it will become a 16-core, 16-thread. So that is worth... Uh, noting that is where you would go if you wanted to turn off uh, the simultaneous multi-threading. Um, so now we come to the precision boost overdrive. This is going to be where we spend the rest of the video. This is going to be showing how to enable what AMD deems uh, eco mode. So we go in here. You see I've already had it set for eco mode, but let me go ahead and set this back to um, auto. So this is where it gets a little bit interesting because the the motherboard vendors were allowed to set their own limits based off of how they want to handle the VRM cooling, for example. Like, for example, if you had a lower-end motherboard or an entry-level board that had smaller VRMs, less amount of phases, uh, less chokes, that sort of thing, or smaller heat sinks, or even in some cases no heat sinks, uh, then their motherboard specification or their motherboard limits would be a lot lower for the PBO as opposed to auto or disabled or manual. So the auto will basically allow it to run kind of like uh, Intel's unlimited power mode from my experience. But again, this really depends on the motherboard because in my case, we're using an Aorus Master. This has a very high end VRM. The, the MOSFETs are actually pretty high rated at 105 amps. So the this is very good in terms of what as close as you'd get to maximum out of the box uh, automatic overclocking. I think the, the PBO limit is already pretty high on this board. Uh, this is the sort of thing that's going to cause it to run to 95 Celsius, though. Uh, 
So it's one of these things where now the processor is designed to handle very high heat loads. So it will actively try to go to 95 Celsius, regardless of your cooling. The better your cooling, the longer it will take it to reach 95. The, the worse your cooling, the faster it will hit 95. So you'll get, for better cooling, you'll get higher boost durations as opposed to having lesser cooling, if that makes sense. So what we want to do, though, is we want to enable what's called eco mode. So what you want to do there is you want to go to manual mode. And then here we're going to want to set our own limits. Um, but the limits you see here on screen are the actual eco mode numbers. Um, you would have to key these in manually. So, for example, I'd have to type this. I think the default is like 70, 720,000 milliwatts. I think this is the default as the PPT limit. Um, but I, I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've been in here and I changed this. Um, but the key point is you will have to change this manually. So for a 7900X or a 7950X, basically if you have a Ryzen 9 processor, these are the numbers you need to be using if you want to enable eco mode. 142,000 for the PPT limit. That's going to be in milliwatts. So this is 142 watts. The TDC limit is in milliamps. You're going to want to do 110,000 milliamps, that's 110 amps. And then for the EDC limit, which is also in milliamps, at least listed on this motherboard, you're going to do 170,000 milliamps or 170 amps. So it depends on your motherboard. So the reason why I'm giving you guys the amperage and the milliamps numbers and the milliwatts and the watts numbers is because though my motherboard specifies it in milliwatts, other motherboard manufacturers might specify it in a different uh, numeric system. So they might be using watts, for example, or amps as opposed to milliamps. So just to keep that in mind, you would have to do the math. So you'd have to be able to convert from milliwatts to watts or milliamps to amps. So these numbers are the numbers for a Ryzen 9 processor, both the 7900X and the 7950X. If you have a 7600X, or a 7700X. So if you have a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7, the numbers are going to be different because those are single CCD processors, whereas the Ryzen 9s are dual CCD processors. So for the PPT limit on a 7700X or a 7600X, that's going to be 88,000 milliwatts. For the TDC limit, we're going to set that to 75,000. And for the EDC, that's going to be 150,000. So these are the numbers if you have a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7, also known as a single CCD processor. So those are going to be the numbers. So this is going to enable eco mode. Essentially what this is doing is this is roughly going to um, set the TDP limit to around, I believe, 95 watts or maybe it might be 65 watts. Actually, it might be 65 watts. Um, so there's different uh, numbers. You'd have to look uh, if, if I can find the other numbers for like 95 TDP, um, I can, I'll probably add those to the video description below. Um, but these are the numbers again for the single CCD. And if you have a dual CCD, like for example, what I have, you'd have to use these upper numbers here. Um, but essentially these are the numbers that set it to run at a 105 TDP limit. So this effectively, these numbers effectively power limit the Ryzen 9 7000 processors to the, the sort of power limits that the Ryzen 9 5950X or the last generation ran at. And what we have found is that even though you're power limiting it, this processor still far outperforms the previous generation Zen 3 processor in multi-threading and single threading. So it is worth doing. Doing this, running it like this, on a Noctua NHD15 air cooler, I am now only at like 71 degrees Celsius as opposed to 95 degrees Celsius. All right, the other noteworthy setting that I want to point out here in particular, or it's, a, it's going to be under settings, and you want to go to AMD CBS, and then you're going to want to look at the UMC common options. So the UMC common options stands for Unified Memory Controller. So you're going to want to go in here, you're going to want to go to DDR options, and then in particular, you're going to want to go to the setting that says DDR memory features. So in this 
submenu, you're going to find something called Memory Context Restore. This typically is set to auto when it starts out. <clears throat> but what this setting does is this is the setting that when it's enabled, the DRAM retraining is avoided when possible and the post latency is minimized. So what I have found is that in auto, oftentimes my gigabyte board in particular doesn't seem to want to, to do this. It, it wants to, it, it tends to want to retrain the memory from a cold boot pretty much every time. Um, but if you do context restore enabled, so basically you force it to do this, you're more likely to skip the DRAM uh, retraining. So that code 15, if you have a motherboard with a postcode, uh, pretty much anyone who's an early adopter of Ryzen 7000 knows that code 15 means memory training. If you enable this, you're more likely to be able to get that fast post time, um, from my experience at least, with the current BIOS, the Agisa 1003 Revision A. Um, so I'm pretty sure this will be improved over time as newer UEFI updates become available. But this is the main setting that you're going to want to make sure you enable if you want to skip the retraining uh, of the memory as much as possible. In some cases, it'll still retrain. I don't know. I think that's like a, an early BIOS bug or something like that. Um, but hope you guys find this setting useful in particular because I think this is a big one that a lot of people are probably sitting there scratching their heads as to why it takes so long to post um, even though it's not the initial post. So, but I hope, hopefully this helps you guys out. So, because I've done this and, and now my post times are pretty much normal, um, just the way they were on the previous generation. All right, and this, I wanted to show now um, how fast AM5, like an X670 board can post. So I press the power button there, and there we go. GPU lights up. And there's your post. All right, so we're gonna show, we're gonna establish a baseline of how this processor behaves on an air cooler. Now noted it is a high-end air cooler. This is an Octo NHD 15. We're gonna establish a baseline of how the Ryzen, the flagship Ryzen 9 7950X behaves at stock on a Gigabyte Aorus master board. So if you can see, I have Harbor Monitor open on the right side here to show whether or not we're gonna be thermal throttling. You wanna pay attention to these three Right now they currently say no, so we're not thermal throttling. Uh, and then you're going to want to pay attention to the temperatures shown for the CCD1, CCD2, as well as the CCD, uh, the CPU die, uh, and the, the top one here. So the, these four, as well as the thermal throttling right here. So this is what you're going to want to pay attention to. Now, just to reiterate, I am running on an air cooler. So this is going to prove that you can get the full performance out of an air cooler uh, you can get the full performance out of the Ryzen 9 flagship just by running an air cooler. You don't need fancy liquid cooling. So let's go ahead and run this, and we're going to pay attention to the, the temperatures over here on the right. All right, so we're running, and there we go. It's going to 91C, 95C, it's close, and look at that. We're not thermal throttling. Down there, it still says no. We're not thermal throttling. And you can see the power is 205 and we're done so there we go so 37,000 so the number doesn't really matter because I haven't really tuned the memory um, but in general we are seeing the 95C and that is by design the main thing to look at though is the and you can see here in the clock speed we did not we weren't thermal throttling uh, we, we weren't losing clock how it heats up the processor so if you look on the right I have hardware info 64 you can see the temperature, the max temperature we're getting is 67 Celsius while running Cinebench, while we're power limiting. And you look at the the power, right? The power core, it's only doing like 112 watts or 100, the see, there it is, so 142. See, that's the limit that we enforced on the PPT. And then the other thing too that we wanted to look at is the thermal throttling down here it'll tell you if you're thermal throttling and in all cases now we're not thermal throttling now having said that i do want to mention that even out of the box when it runs at 95c it's not going to be thermal throttling because and that and the way you verify it is you run it at the stock and you have harbor info 64 open with the sensors and you and you come down here while it's running and you'll see that it's not thermal throttling right 
So in both cases, it it's not a big deal. If you're okay with the 95C, um, then you can just leave it stock and you're still not thermal throttling. And guys, remember that I am using a Noctua NHD15 air cooler. I'm not even using any fancy liquid cooling. Uh, that's that's going to be it. So yes, we are giving up some performance. We're just shy of 3,500. Um, but I have seen this with higher spec memory. You are going to get around 35. I, I, th I think I've seen 35,500, something like that. Um, but yeah, compared to out of the box, it is lower. So you are kind of taking some of the performance away. But I do think that this would have been a good default out of box configuration. And the other thing that I'll note is that unlike Intel, Either the default or the eco mode does not thermal throttle. When whenever I'm running the 13900K, no matter what is no what no matter if I'm in power limit, enforcing power limit, or running in unlimited power, um, it always thermal throttles. It always goes to 100C regardless of what I do, which tells me that uh, there's no way to properly cool that CPU because you can be running a 360 AIO and it's still going to thermal throttle. So I do think that the, the Ryzen processor is more efficient and it seems to be more uh, well behaved in terms of its thermal characteristics. So I hope you guys found that part of this video uh, useful, especially if you're on the fence trying to figure out if you're wanting to build a PC for production, which one to go with. So if you're someone who was kind of scared off by the high 95 Celsius number, although I, I really think that's overblown, really, honestly, there's really nothing to be afraid of there. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want my fan profiles to be quiet all the time. I don't want to hear the fans ramping up um, under full load. Now, they'll still ramp up over time, but the, the fan characteristic behavior is a lot smoother when you're running it at this power limited eco mode. So if you're someone who wants to do that for acoustics reasons or... Um, you just don't like 95C on the processor and you do a lot of rendering work, like for example, if you use Blender or DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere or any kind of uh, production workload that loads up the cores to full power, um, I think this is worth doing. It does sacrifice some performance, um, but it has much better noise characteristics. And now on an air cooler, you're running at a more, uh, more normal temperature of like in the 70 Celsius range at full load and then while gaming you're only you know down at like 50 celsius or like 40 46 celsius depending on the game so hopefully you guys found this video helpful uh, we may cover things like the curve optimizer in a future video but for now i'm just going to leave it at that for the eco mode so this shows how to enable eco mode on ryzen 7000 am5 motherboards and if you guys have any questions leave a comment below it really helps me out and if you want to support the channel, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell icon at the bottom so you won't miss uh, future content from me uh, regarding Ryzen or Intel's new core processors. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks.